All right, next up we got Matt Dudley. Um, Matt Dudley is a water resources and GIS department manager, manager for ESP and Associates in Raleigh, North Carolina. He has 20 years of experience in the water resources industry following graduation with a BS in biological systems engineering from Virginia Tech, go Hokies. Over the past eight years, he has supported NC, North Carolina Emergency Management and NCDOT with continued expansion of the statewide Feynman and Feynman T flood warming applications through development of new and improved flood inundation mapping and associated products. Mr. Dudley is a certified floodplain manager and licensed professional engineer. So welcome, Matt. Thank you, Matt. Uh, I'm excited to be here to talk about Feynman T. It's, it's great to see what Texas has done uh, with the inspiration from us. And, and I think listening to you guys, I got some inspiration myself to maybe think of thing, some things differently. And, um, and that's why we're all here, right? Um, anyway, excited to be here. Uh, Feynman T is one of the most uh, rewarding projects I've worked on in the past three years. It's a project we've done for North Carolina Department of Transportation in partnership with North Carolina emergency management. Um, and before we get started, I think it's important to understand that this is just one of the tools that the North Carolina is using to improve their resiliency. So here's an outline of what I'm going to talk about. Uh, since a lot of you might not be aware of what traditional Feynman is, I'm going to do a little bit of an overview about that. And then we'll talk about what was the genesis for Feynman T, why we developed it, go into the data and processing a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to be so brave to do a live demo, but we're going to do uh, a demonstration of both the, the gauge-based Feynman T and also some work we've been doing with storm surge modeling and products. Going to talk about some validation, because uh, that's really cool to see, uh, and then reporting and some next steps. So uh, what is Feynman? So Feynman is developed by emergency management. It's a statewide flood warning application. Uh, the top left corner, you can see the statewide view. There's over 400 sites uh, in, in Feynman. Uh, these are gauges that are USGS gauges. Emergency management has put in a, a, a lot of gauges just this past year. Uh, over 70 gauges were installed. Uh, DOT has been putting gauges out in the field. Uh, and communities as well have been installing gauges uh, for their use. Uh, and um, as you can see, traditional Feynman uh, at about half of those sites, uh, all these gauges are reporting, and all the sites are reporting water level, uh, but about half of those sites were also providing real-time inundation mapping. And the traditional Feynman application, what that provides is awareness on building level damages. You can't quite see it at this view, but for each building you can click on it and they're also color-coded and you can see an estimated amount of damage that's occurring based on the current flood conditions. And all that data can be rolled up and reported uh, to emergency management officials. Here's a, a quick timeline of the flood warning program in North Carolina. Uh, really, it started in, in, in 1999 with Hurricane Floyd. It was a massive event for the state, record setting at that time. And that really kicked off both flood warning and also the floodplain mapping program that's been very active within the state. Uh, the application, the flood warning application, was, was pretty rudimentary for a while. It was not public facing, it was just for emergency management. Um, but it did continue to grow. In 2016, there was a big update, a redesign that got it public facing. And also, we got hit with Hurricane Matthew and had a lot of lessons learned from that. Uh, since then, uh, we've continued to expand uh, and adding more libraries and, and, uh, and functionality to the site as well. Here's a couple example uh, stations that have been installed, uh, traditional USGS stations out west. A lot of the stations are still pressure transducers, but more recently, as, um, as Andy noted, in Texas, they're moving towards more radar-based systems. So the, on the right there is a system that was installed last, uh, last couple years uh, in, in the coastal part of the state. So a big takeaway for Feynman to understand is, is there is no on-the-fly modeling being done by the system. Uh, what we do is we use what's called inundation libraries. And these are model-backed, hydraulic model-backed inundation libraries. And we typically use existing hydraulic models, either from the flood insurance study, or we may create a new model and, and add survey if needed. And then what we will do is 
we will identify where the stream gauge is located within that model, and then we'll uh, truncate the model within extents that we feel confident about based on hydrologic, topographic, and temporal considerations. And we'll truncate the model and we'll iterate flows through that model to peg stage levels at half foot increments. And that's what you can see here. So we have a bunch of flows, uh, a bunch of results, and for each one of those profiles, uh, we will do the associated inundation mapping, we will do the risk assessment to do the building level risk, dam the building level damages, and we'll populate a, a database that is sitting there waiting to be pegged for when the application goes and grabs uh, the readings in the field, and then based on what the gauges are reporting for that area, it'll present the inundation mapping and the risk assessment. So, uh, Hurricane Florence, like I said, in 2016, we did a big redesign. We were feeling pretty good. We had some lessons learned from Matthew. We made some improvements. And then two years later, Hurricane Florence hit. Um, in general, Feynman was uh, a big success story for during Hurricane, Math, uh, Hurricane Florence. Uh, we had uh, the governor during news briefings was mentioning it. We had a lot of hits on the site. Uh, and in general, like I said, it was a, a big success story. Um, however, with with all this improved awareness, improved data, people start asking other questions about uh, different impacts. And when two of your primary corridors within the state, I-95 and I-40, go underwater, a lot of those questions were, were going to my buddy, uh, Matt Lawfer here. Uh, so DOT was getting asked a lot of questions about what, how can we access certain areas, uh, how deep is the flooding on certain roads, when's it going to recede, um, and honestly, there are a lot of questions that we didn't have immediate answers for. Um, so that kind of is what kicked us off into working with DOT and developing Feynman T. So uh, the goals of the program, we wanted to leverage existing data. Uh, LIDAR has been mentioned uh, before and what they're doing in Texas, but we have great LIDAR in North Carolina. So we wanted to leverage that in addition to the Feynman in infrastructure that had been built and was in place with all the gauges. Uh, a lot of the DOT data, uh, databases and, and uh, bridge information and assets. Uh, the goals of the software were to build it based on Feynman, but keep, to keep it isolated from Feynman uh, until we uh, had, a, had a good handle on how, what we wanted to do. Uh, we wanted to show flooding depths, inundation depths over roads, and also improved awareness at bridges and other assets and also give reporting tools for the Emergency Operations Center during events. So in 2019, we kicked off a pilot. We did six sites along the Noose River corridor. Uh, we really pushed the limits on how far we could stretch these libraries. Uh, the Noose River is a large river, for those not aware, so you can, uh, you can get pretty aggressive with how far you can push the limits of the library and get some good results. Uh, and then also we wanted to, in that pilot, develop the basic functionality uh, get some lessons learned and feedback from stakeholders and improve it. A big takeaway also is it is not open to the public. It was on a development server. Uh, and then since the pilot's been completed, we've been continuing to expand it, uh, adding more sites, doing some prioritization for future sites and, and goals. And also we've been looking at, uh, and I'll talk a little bit about some coastal surge modeling and how we can use that with the Feynman T lessons learned. Um, and let's see, we will quickly show kind of a diagram. This just shows how Feynman T and Feynman are related. They use a lot of the same data, but we did develop a standalone Feynman T database to house the future classes and, and tables to relate everything together and be able to roll up all the information. So as mentioned, uh, a big foundational component of Feynman T is the LIDAR data. North Carolina is blessed to be a pretty data-rich state. They were one of the first uh, states to have statewide LIDAR data, and they've continued to keep that updated. Uh, what we did with the LIDAR is we, we used the classifications, as Andy explained, uh, to isolate the roadway classification into what we call a roadway ribbon. And this, I'm just zooming into a certain area here to show the detail of this LIDAR data. And this is a raster, so anywhere you click on this raster, you're gonna get the roadway elevation. Uh, so as a byproduct of the inundation libraries that we do, we also have water surface elevation rasters. 
So it's pretty easy to use GIS to overlay the two rasters and quickly get uh, overtopping and elevation on the entire roadway network within the library footprint. Uh, the problem is, not really a problem, but rasters, um, they're great for visualization, but they're, uh, they're kind of dumb in a way. They, usually they only know about one value. Um, so we wanted to be able to roll up the information and, and show additional details, including road names, uh, road type, the classification, the daily traffic level, uh, and also serve it up in a, in a web service as well. And a big, a big criteria, too, was to be able to report out metrics of, of mileage of road inundated by what depths and in what classification. So to do that, uh, we converted that into a, into a vector using all the, uh, the data from DOT and the LRS data set. So here's a Feynman C login page. It is um, uh, authenticated, user authentication based on uh, NCID. So again, it's not open to the public uh, as of right now. And just to give you an idea, this is what the pilot looked like. So these are our six sites along the Noose River. Um, and then since then, uh, that highlights our, uh, our pilot area. And then we've added 45 new sites uh, in the last couple of years and uh, continuing to add based on, again, prioritization and strategic areas for, for DOT. So uh, we'll step into the application here. This is the home screen. As you can see, the, the green dots indicate all the gauges. Uh, and the colorization, if you can't see, is, is based on the risk rating. So as an event occurs, uh, based on different levels specific to impacts in the area, the gauges will turn color from a monitor up to a major flooding event. And also, it'll show trending. If the level is stable, you'll just get the nice little uh, line there. And if it's, the trend is increasing, you'll see an up arrow. Or decreasing, you'll see a down arrow. Um, so as we step in, if you click on a gauge, you're going to be taken to that individual library area. And within the application, you're going to see four different tabs. Uh, you've got the current tab. That's going to show current conditions. So this is a hydrograph of what's happening at that gauge. Um, if the inundation library has been triggered, because we don't, we're not going to have mapping at base conditions, but there's a certain level when it gets out of the banks that we would start with inundation mapping. So if that inundation mapping is triggered, you're going to see that. Uh, you're also going to see any of the associated road and bridge impacts. And then if there's a forecast at a peak, we'll talk a little bit about that. But, but if there's a forecast at a peak, you also see what that peak level is anticipated to be. We've got scenario mode, which is essentially a planning tool, kind of a playground to look at what if scenarios uh, for, for various stages. You've got a forecast tab. So this is going to be time-based forecast. Uh, and you can use a slider bar to move forward. We'll take a look at that in time to see what is it going to look like at the, the, the forecasted peak. And then last tab we added more recently is a historic tab, which is really cool to see kind of post-mortem uh, what were the peak stages that occurred at these gauges when they were in place for Hurricane Floyd, Hurricane Florence, and, um, and what was the associated inundation and impacts for that event. And it's, gr it's great for comparative purposes to understand where we are now and, and how it might compare to past events. So here's another look at the current conditions tab. Um, as you can see, we do have inundation being displayed here. Um, and uh, if, if you can see where the cursor is, is hovering, when you hover over a road and click on it, you can get the road name and the associated max depth of that segment. You'll see that the road inundation is color coded based on various levels from zero to half a foot up to five foot plus. In addition, you'll see that uh, we have the bridges that likewise you can hover over them and get the bridge number, the road name, and also the, the available freeboard based on current conditions or forecasted if you're looking at that view. So in this example, uh, this is along the Noose River near Gold, Goldsboro. The freeboard at the main bridge is 7.7 .7 feet, whereas this uh, auxiliary structure over to the side it only has about a tenth of a foot of freeboard. So that's good awareness. And you'll see in a, in a future slide, we've actually made some improvements on the, the bridge symbolization. So now we actually have those color-coded 
as well based on what the level is. <clears throat> you also have interactive widgets down here at the bottom. So if you click on, let's see, the, the fourth widget there, the window that has the road mileage impacted, you'll bring up another interactive window that will give you a summary of all the roads within that library footprint. Uh, and it's, it's uh, segmented by the depth range of uh, the inundation depth and also the road type. So interstate, highway, U.S. highway, NC highway, or local. And you can see all that uh, in a summary view. You can also click on the second tab for road segments, and that's going to give you a lot more detailed information where you can sort through the individual segments that are impacted. Uh, and you can filter by the type of the road. So, if, for example, if you just wanted to see the state highways, you can click on that. And then you can also click on each column for, in this case, the flood depth. If you wanted to see what state highway has the highest amount of flood inundation, you can sort on that. And then you can use this zoom to function to actually zoom right to that segment of interest. And here's the updated uh, bridge hydraulic performance tables and, and symbols that we've done. So here you can see uh, if you click on that last tab, the last window widget uh, that has the assets and bridges, that'll pull up this additional table that'll give you a summary of all the bridges within the library and what their current condition is, what the road elevation, low cord elevation, and what the available freeboard is. And then in the map view, you can see the color coding uh, based on the available freeboard and if it's gone into pressure flow. Uh, so next up is the forecast tab. So another big takeaway, just like Feynman and Feynman T does not do on-the-fly modeling, they also do not do forecasting. Uh, so what we do is we, we take available forecast data, uh, that second widget there, the hydrograph, if you click on that, it'll bring up a larger view. And we, if the site is a river forecast center, in this case, the Southeast River Forecast Center covers uh, Kinston here, uh, then we pull that through their API and visualize that hydrograph. So it, what you're seeing there, the grayed out area to the right of that hydrograph is what's being forecasted. The left side is what's already happened, and then the right side is what is forecasted. So the, in the forecast tab, what we have here is a slider bar that allows you to see the time hours from now and both the stage. So uh, when you click on uh, the forecast tab, you'll initially be brought to what's happening right now, and you'll see the current impacts. In this case, we have five roads about a mile. Uh, they're all local roads about a mile of impact. And then as you slide it forward, uh, you can see the inundation and the road impacts all increase. Now we've got at the peak, the forecasted peak of this event, and this was, uh, this is actually Hurricane Fran, a simulation. Uh, in this site, we had 60 roads and uh, over uh, 10 miles, uh, including one state highway. Um, in addition, uh, we've uh, implemented some additional functionality to get data out of the system for folks that might not be uh, either able to access the Feynman T application or aware of how it functions. Uh, one of those is a Google Earth export. Uh, so when you're looking at a display, either for current or forecasted peak conditions, you can click the download of KMZ, and that's going to export both the inundation mapping and the color-coded roads with all of the uh, road attribute information uh, that is interactable within the Google Earth. Uh, likewise, uh, the bridge performance table, uh, this was in a, for, for a forecasted condition. Uh, this is actually a Hurricane Florence scenario that we did, uh, but that forecast uh, condition in that bridge table can also be uh, exported in an Excel format that can be provided to uh, other stakeholders. So the scenario mode is uh, just quickly, like I mentioned, this is kind of a planning level widget. Uh, you do have this slider bar that you can move forward in time. So as we pick up in half foot increments of stage, you'll see the inundation increasing, the roadway impacts, the roads changing color based on inundation. And again, that's just to get an idea of what would happen if this level were reached at this location. 
The last tab is, uh, like I mentioned, the, one of the more recent tabs we added for historic uh, information. So for each uh, event where the gauge was in place and had records, uh, we kind of back-populated what the peak was for that event and then developed the inundation and the, the impacts for all those events. So in this case, uh, we're looking at Hurricane Fran here uh, in Kinston. I'm sorry, this is Hurricane Matthew in Kinston. And if you want to compare that to Hurricane Florence, you can su simply use this uh, interactive table here to pick it. So uh, in this case, in Kinston, Matthew was the event of record, uh, which was about three feet greater than Florence. So uh, we've also been thinking about ways to improve uh, awareness, and one of those areas is the hurricane-prone area on the coast. And we've been fortunate to work with uh, the UNC Renzi Center, the Center of the Coastal Resilience Center, and they do ad circ modeling uh, for each hurricane advisory that's posted uh, by the National Hurricane Center. And so we've worked with them and are able to basically get all those model results, all the, all the ad circ nodes and the results at every single node, and kind of like an inundation library approach, although for the entire coast, we will take all those nodes, we'll develop a water surface elevation raster, we'll do uh, improved inundation mapping with the latest LIDAR we have available, and then we'll drape that over the roadway ribbons, the roadway ribbon raster, and create roadway inundation for the entire coast, uh, now, or the, at least the, the area that could be impacted by the event. Uh, it is important to know that this, this is just uh, predictive based on ad circ modeling. Uh, there's no temporal aspect of this. Uh, the AdCERC model is giving us the, uh, the highest or, or the, most, uh, the most highest level of inundation and impact that is currently predicted based on the model. So you're going to see, uh, again, the entire area that could be affected in, in, one, in one picture. And we can do that about once every six hours. Uh, it, it is a pretty processing intensive, as you can imagine, to get all those nodes and to do all the GIS processing and to create the inundation, create all the roads, create all the roll-up tables for, for visualization. And likewise, for uh, this module, we've also uh, developed, uh, based on the National Hurricane Center Hindcast and Hindcast uh, ad circle runs, uh, historic events for that as well, which can be really helpful when an event is, is coming across and we get a, a forecast for where it could hit. And people always ask, well, is it going to be as bad as, as Dorian? Are we talking about a Matthew here? And so this enables us to look at the current track and what the current uh, model is giving us and compare that to what those prior events looked like. So uh, quickly want to hit on some validation because this is some fun stuff for engineers to look at and it, it's, it's great to know that we're doing cool work but it's also really important to know that you have confidence in your products. So here's a couple of validation events. We'll, we'll look, this is just a, an example looking at the inundation mapping itself. Uh, this was uh, in the Goldsboro Library uh, about four miles from the Feynman gauge itself and this is showing the inundation mapping on February 20th, uh, and this was a site visit done about 9.30. The screen grab at the bottom was, I believe, at 9.15. The application was updated at 9.15. So you can see the correlation. We've got a, a, a sign here in this parking lot that was just on the fringe of the flooding, and then the lower half of the parking lot being inundated, which is what we're showing. Uh, so we felt pretty good about that. In the same area, we went and checked out some of the bridges that we were uh, forecasting freeboard on. And again, this is four miles from the gauge. Uh, this is a relief opening that Feynman T was reporting about a tenth of a foot of freeboard. And then in the field, we uh, observed approximately half a foot, uh, plus or minus, so we felt, felt good about that. Whereas the main structure here was uh, between seven and eight feet is what Feynman T was telling us. And you can see, based on the field photo, that um, we were looking at probably about seven feet. Now we wanted to look at how about our roadway inundation depths? How, how are those looking? So this is an area 
um, uh, in, the same, in the same footprint, I believe on the same day, uh, that indicated uh, minor flooding on a small road. So we went and checked it out. Feynman T was uh, showing about a foot and a half of inundation depth. And actually while we were there, a truck drove through and allowed us to get an idea about the depth and, um, and that matched up pretty well. Now with, with adding these historic events uh, for additional data, it enables us to kind of do some more post-mortem on, well, how, how would our product have performed, had it been in place during that event? Uh, in this case, we're looking at uh, uh, Tarboro during Hurricane Matthew, and there's, there's post-event imagery from NOAA, and then this is our historic event of view in Feynman T, and you can see these four uh, correlation points uh, that matched up pretty well with, with what actually occurred. And then finally, we'll go way back to Hurricane uh, Floyd. Uh, this is a picture that got a lot of, uh, a lot of media and was uh, shared around a lot. Um, intersection of Candlewood Road and Steeple, Steeplechase Road where the stop sign is almost underwater. And so we decided, well, let's go look at that location in Feynman T with our historic view on and take a look. And sure enough, it's in the, the purple category, which is five feet or greater. And when we click on that road itself, we were uh, estimated about 7.1 feet of, of roadway inundation. Last thing I want to touch on is some dashboards we're working on. Again, we want to be able to give summarizations of the data that Feynman T is producing, the road impacts, uh, and, and get that out to counties and, and divisions within DOT, uh, and especially for those that either don't have access to the application or again, don't know how to use it. And, and this is also gonna be beneficial for high level briefings during events. And these are all gonna be posted on, on DOT storm response site as well. So the first dashboard we did, just again, to summarize all the data is, is an Excel, kind of a massive uh, pivot table with a lot of different slicers and, and, uh, and filters that can be implemented. And this allows you to drill down based on uh, what county you're interested in, what road class you're interested in, or if there's um, a certain depth category that you only are concerned with. So we have a summary tab here, and then we have tabs for evacuation routes, primary routes, secondary routes, and uh, in, this, in this, what we're looking at here is there's sample uh, Hurricane Fran data, uh, but again, within the, this example, you're able to pick what division you're in, it'll automatically filter the data, and, and also, drill down on how much road inundation are you concerned with. We also did a dashboard for the, the surge component. So this is all the surge data um, uh, from the AdCERC modeling that you're able to, again, filter down based on a specific division or a county or an inundation, inundation level. We're also working to, uh, to separate the, the surge component of Feynman T into a possibly a different application. Uh, so we're working on an ArcGIS Online dashboard that has a lot of the same, or actually the same information uh, that Feynman T has in terms of uh, what the surge inundation is looking at, looking like, and what all the roadway inundation looks like. Uh, and, uh, and then it gives some, um, some nice and easy to understand bar charts and pie charts. And it's also interactive on a zoom scale. So if you zoom in on the dashboard, uh, you're gonna get updated metrics based on uh, what's in your, your view. Also, uh, similar to what we were talking about with the historic storms, the bottom here, you have all the historic events. Uh, we've got Fran, Floyd, Matthew, Florence, Dorian, Isaias, that you can click on all those and, and view those in the dashboard as well. So, i uh, got a minute left here. Next steps, really quickly. Um, we are working through a build-out plan uh, where we've done a prioritization analysis to identify sites that will be of most benefit to Feynman T and looking at uh, continuing to expand and add new sites. Uh, always looking to increase functionality and improve the reporting uh, that's available. And honestly, we're hoping to survive the hurricane 2022 season. Uh, we will like, knock on wood, a small event to test out the system would be great. Uh, we're hoping we don't see another massive event, uh, but we are excited to see how, how we can improve uh, resiliency throughout the state. So, that I can take any questions. Sure. 
Jen. You can, and, and that's somewhat dependent upon where you are in the state and what the LIDAR classifications were at that time. The state LIDAR data has been collected in, in different uh, phases. And so in some, we do have the bridge classifications like, uh, like Andy mentioned. It's important to have those so you don't think that the, the bridge is underwater when it's not. But yes, you can see the, the approach of the road and the LIDAR for the road compared to the bridge.